Yeah, I'm going to give an update on Whisper. So uh, a quick reminder, what is Whisper? Uh, it's a peer-to-peer -peer messaging system with strong uh, metadata privacy guarantee. You cannot, like, no one can read the content of your message, and they cannot know who you're sending it to either. So because of the way it's implemented, uh, you need a lot of bandwidth. You cannot really do video uh, chat, things like that. Uh, the best use case is really to uh, distribute uh, a message to several recipients. And uh, so like what would be necessary or uh, possible in, in distributed exchanges. <clears throat> but you have some company like Les, like, uh, like Status, of course, who have, um, who have implemented that uh, as a messaging system. So, so uh, that's, that's really nice. Uh, as a quick reminder of how it works, imagine that those diamonds represent uh, nodes on the network. Uh, and uh, the node on the far left wants to send a message to nodes on the, on the right. So what they do, uh, they just forward, um, oh yeah, I forgot to say the, the blue lines are the, the network uh, links. So the, the node forwards the message to, their, uh, to, to its neighbors, and uh, those neighbors in turn forward the, the message to, to their neighbors. And you can already see that the one at the bottom already received two copies of the message. Um, and the other thing is that uh, one of the recipients got the message. But to not be identified as the recipient, they will still keep forwarding the message to their neighbors. And you can see that one of the nodes already received three copies, and that is a pretty simple network. So over the last year, uh, we released version 6. Uh, I built a test net, <clears throat> and I implemented a leap P2P version of Whisper. Uh, right, so the lip 2 p version, uh, last year in Cancun we, we had a talk with Parity with lip 2 p people, and we agreed uh, to try uh, to use Whisper as a test bed for lip 2 p simply because Whisper is fairly independent from the rest of the, of the network, so, uh, so that was a, a nice uh, experiment. And uh, I made a couple, uh, a couple um, um, how do you call it? A couple PRs. One of them, uh, one of those proof of concept of work. So it's available at this address. Um, I have a testnet of uh, lip 2 p uh, Whisper clients talking to each other. The problem is that uh, lip 2 p at least the Go implementation, is not exactly modular yet. So uh, we have to bring in 400 files. So that's a bit of a problem. So that's why it's not uh, it's not available yet. Uh, so when it comes to uh, the development that is going to take place this year. Uh, first, Status is uh, starting a big documentation effort. So uh, I'm joining in, so uh, kudos to them for, for, for helping with that. Um, there's a drive, because Parity has a slightly different uh, uh, version of the protocol. It's not compatible, so I'm going to spend some time uh, trying to, to make them uh, talk, or offer a PR. Hopefully, I'll get a t-shirt in, uh, in response. And um, the, other, uh, the other two things, uh, so there is a test net, there are examples on how to use it, but people keep asking questions, so uh, there's, a, there's a need to, to improve the, the communication on that. So these are the um, easier uh, things. Now I want to uh, delve a little bit uh, more into the lip P2P changes. So this is a very contrived example or uh, representation of the of the current state with Dev P2P. Uh, so on top uh, in the red boxes you got the protocols. You have you have ETH. You have Whisper, and then uh, just below it you have the library. Um, let's call it the library. So the server object, the protocol object, and then you have Dev P2P proper. And the FP2P does all the heavy lifting. It does the discovery. It does uh, all the connection uh, connection things. And uh, and really down at the bottom, you got the transport layer, which uh, is called uh, RLPX. Um, it's got some some security issues. So that's uh, what's uh, initially driving the the potential potential switch to to lip P2P. Now the PR that I uh, that is available, the one I described earlier, uh, it's basically just putting another server right next to the dev P2P server. Um, and uh, like you have some uh, two almost independent entities, uh, except Whisper kind of still relies on the library layer, so it's a bit of a, of a hack. Uh, but this is not what we want to do for several reasons. Well, one of them is that we know a lot of things about uh, dev P2P. Uh, Felix has invested a lot of time in, in, in that, for example. Uh, we can't just chuck everything and move to the next, uh, to something new that we don't really understand. Uh, the other uh, 
the other issue is that uh, lip 2 p itself, I mean, that, that's, that's a big change. That's really an engineering uh, problem here. Uh, lip 2 p has, uh, we started a discussion with them recently. Um, it's got a lot, of, um, a lot of modules that we don't need, a lot of uh, redundant uh, things. So uh, I'm really, uh, really happy, really enthusiastic about the work that we can do together. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the goal would be to uh, end up with this. So uh, we just keep dev P2P for now to benefit from all the security uh, we, we have so far. And we just slowly phase out um, RLPX and we use the, lip, uh, the transport layer of, of lib P2P. Um, and over time, uh, we slowly re uh, replace components of dev P2P with lib P2P, if that makes sense. Um, and then there are on the horizon, there are more long-term improvements. Uh, so one of them is the proof of work. So Whisper, when you send a message, you calculate the proof of work on, on this message. This is to prevent spamming. Uh, because if you remember, uh, when you send one message, it gets duplicated and sent over several times. So you need to make sure that you don't abuse the system. Uh, the problem with that is that uh, Status is complaining that the proof of work is uh, draining the battery, like calculation is draining the batteries of mobile phones. <clears throat> so I want to spend some time uh, trying to find alternative proof of work uh, algorithms uh, that will consume less power. And uh, Daniel from, uh, from Swarm uh, has suggested to use proof of burn, which is great for, uh, for preventing spam because it's your own money. Uh, however, uh, it's connected to your uh, et uh, Ethereum account, which means that when it comes to privacy, uh, you are pretty much identified. So, uh, so yeah, that needs to be to be um, improved. And then uh, we want I want to do some uh, some simulations uh, for try to not for forward the message. Um, to every every single node, uh, try to have uh, a bit more um, feedback between the nodes to to not uh, forward. So, as a, once again a contrived example, if you remember this slide, uh, at the point where the node received two messages, if you see that the same message uh, keeps going, keeps coming from two different peers, well, you simply remove um, remove one of the peers. Uh, so, th once again, this is a very contrived example. We need to to make sure that. Uh, you know, privacy uh, is and metadata privacy privacy is uh, is ensured if we do that. But I think it's uh, it's a good uh, it's a good um, uh, experiment to have uh, in the coming year. And the last uh, improvement I want to work on it's Wasm. So I'm sure uh, most of you have heard of Wasm, but just in case uh, you've been living under a rock, so Wasm lets you. Uh, take whatever language you uh, a program written in whatever language, compile it to a blob, and that blob will run in a virtual machine in your browser or on Node. Uh, and Wasm has a lot of uh, nice pr uh, properties because so far, uh, what we use is the remote procedure call, call. So if you have a D app, it's running in your browser. It connects to one of the nodes, ask the node to create a private key for you to encrypt your message and to forward it, which means you uh, you need to to trust the node. And thanks to Wasm, now you all all you need to do is trust your browser. Um, Okay, I thought I thought people would think it's funny, um, <laughs> but ideally, uh, if you can trust your browser, then uh, it's it's much more secure. <laughs> Because uh, yeah, it's it's much more secure. But it, or or if you run it on Node on your on your machine, uh, you don't have to trust anybody. Uh, the only issue with uh, with Wasm at this stage is that uh, the Go, for example, the Go compiler to Wasm is pretty new. A lot of uh, a lot of the dependencies don't compile, so there's some need to wait for the. Um, for the, the ecosystem to mature. So we're a bit, uh, uh, yeah, we're waiting a bit for, for that to happen. Um, so I'll, I'll end up with a roadmap. So the easy stuff first, documentation, parity compatibility. Then around the middle of next year, I hope to be able to publish some uh, results about my networking experiments. Maybe uh, the collaboration uh, with, uh, with lib P2P will, uh, will be fruitful and we can, uh, we can provide uh, some, uh, some uh, lib P2P enable, uh, enable geth. And then uh, next year, early next year, uh, WASM and, and the proof of work experiments. So uh, that was pretty much it. If you have uh, plenty of questions, you can can hit me on any of those platforms, or uh, you can catch me and hit me for real. And uh, yes, that's uh, that was uh, that was all for me.